Hey y'all, welcome back to the ranch. I'm Jared Paul, and as you can see, it is a cloudy, rainy day, which is great for the new tree farm and the gardens to get watered in, but not the best for being productive and doing stuff outside. So I figured I would um, do some very necessary defoliation on my favorite tree, my Delonyx Regia, its cuttings, and then uh, my Blue Jacaranda, because I have had an infestation of the tiny, uh, nearly clear uh, green aphids and they uh, they just happen to be at the top of all of my uh, most deciduous trees starting with the tropicals they even got onto some of the maples um, but the maples take better with a uh, spraying so you know the maples I sprayed down with um, some I did with some soapy water uh, some dish soap and water and some I did with uh, wipe out spider mites I wanted to see which solution was best but doing either of those on a Delonyx Regia or a Blue Jacaranda, it's going to cause their delicate leaves to like wither up and they either turn color or half of them fall off the branch. And since you can't prune like midway through a Delonyx Regia branch, you know, and get any, anything to come out of it, you got to take that, the whole leaf out, not the branch. You, you can't cut a leaf in half and expect there uh, to be sprouts coming out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it simple. It's going to be, uh, it's early spring, so this is the perfect time to do this defoliation. I'm not messing with any of the roots, and then we should get some nice budding back, and hopefully uh, this, I could get the aphids under control. I don't know if you have had trouble this year, but this, uh, this past fall and winter have just been insane with the amount of different uh, insects that are trying to kill all my trees. So uh, without further ado, that's what's coming up on today's episode of Jarhead Bonsai. So here we have my Delonyx Regia. Uh, if you've watched this uh, playlist before, you know this was my first bonsai tree grown from seed uh, two years, two months ago. And it was part of that planter's choice kit. Uh, so anyways, if you have started your own, these things grow extremely vigorously after the first couple of months. Um, within eight months, mine had reached the ceiling in a small pot from down all the way to a seven foot ceiling. And that's when I gave it its first chop was at eight months. So this isn't gonna be something uh, that you prune once a year, unless you just want it to be ginormous and take up the whole room. It'll be a two to three times a year. I mean, I might even do it four times a year. I'd have to go back on the playlist to see. Um, but today specifically to get rid of these aphids and uh, uh, go into spring nice and clean. I'm even feeling this right here. And it's, the pot itself is so sticky. If you've had aphids before, you know um, them and some other insects can, can drop some sap and it's just terrible. So I guess I will clean up the rim of the pot too after I get this thing defoliated. I'm gonna use my scissors from Tiny Roots because my standard pruners from you know two years worth of overuse have finally uh, dulled out. They're even misaligned a little bit, so. Since these are really thin, I call them like uh, feminine leaves. These little root scissors are perfect. So I'm just going close to the base of the branch and then uh, cutting it off with the leaf. And you know, after like two weeks, these things will just fall off, or you apply a little pressure and they pop right off. They look, they look, you know, ugly for a little bit. But when you defoliate a tree, I mean, it's not exactly looking great for until it buds back anyway so by the time it buds back those things are ready to fall off so what I'm doing is I'm taking out all these leaves but I'm leaving all the branches so I would consider this just strictly a defoliation and not a pruning I'm not taking off any branches not shortening any branches not I would show you the bugs on these, um, but my camera is on my phone. It's not the best. And these things are hard to see with the naked eye right in front of you. That's why it's that before you know it, your entire tree or room can be just covered in them. You're not paying attention. So what I'll probably do is I'll take a snapshot off of Google if I remember to and I'll input the pic so that you can see if you don't know what I'm talking about. I 
I'm taking everything off here. I guess it's a good time where I can see the structure of the tree. This tree actually has me pretty confused, to be honest with you. I have it growing towards a window, so obviously it grows towards the window. I don't know, I just, I'm not sure that it's taking its shape yet on what I want to do with it, other than its nice little blowing trunk here. I love that, and the initial divide, maybe even you know, the secondary divide, but everything above, I'm either gonna continue to start over and, until I get what I want, or it just hasn't shown itself to me yet. But it's pretty attractive when it grows in, but that's just because the leaves are attractive. If you actually get in here and look, Kind of a mess. <laughs> so I did a prune and repot on this a couple of months ago. It grew in awesome. I was really concerned because I hadn't messed with the roots yet. But just like the branching, obviously the roots grow very muscularly, respond well to just warmth and light, water, fertilizer. I do a six month time release Osmocote Plus, and then every three weeks I dilute a 20, 20, 20 down to a 10, 10, 10, and I water that in. Otherwise I just water like every three or four days, depending on how strong the sun is. Because we have the ranch, the sun rises in the back here over the pond. And so we get a ton of early sunlight coming in, all the main windows coming across. So it could be 60 degrees out, but 90 in here. <laughs> all right, so I'll give it a little spin. Next one. So the next one is quickly becoming one of my favorites. I'll scrub up that pot off camera. So this thing is getting huge. But what this is, let me even see if we can get it in the camera. Yeah, okay, cool. So what this is, is this is just a, a cutting pot. So I have a few of them throughout the house. And when I get something that really takes well and easy as a cutting, like uh, bamboo, I have some cacti here from my Barber Dale. Uh, I have an avocado cutting in there. You can't see this Italian fig <laughs> is getting huge and awesome. So that's cool. And then front and center is the Delonic Sergia cutting. So it took a while for it to come in, but now just like it's mama plant, it is really growing nicely. Uh, but it was with, within an arm's length of my other, the one you just saw, uh, defoliated. So it did get the aphids as well. So in the past, I would have just sprayed this thing and let it look ugly because I would have been afraid to defoliate, but it's been growing so well that I know that it's strong enough at this point to take the defoliation going into spring. don't want to cut too close to the trunk on these because some of the inner nodes or the buds are already developing beforehand. And they're like dormant. So if you get too close, you could damage that and you won't get your back budding. Wow. Tons of little branches coming in over here.
right, so it's back to a stick in a pot. <laughs> Let me just do a quick once over on these bamboo. Sure they don't have anything. I've had problems with scale insects too this week. There's and the smallest amount of spider mites, but they could reproduce quickly, take out a tree. Spider mites I've found are the most detrimental. They're just lethal. All right, I think it's just a little bit of sun damage or maybe overwatering on this fig. And the bamboo is good, the cacti are good, so this is gonna get back right where it was. All right, onto the blue jacaranda. So, let's start with, this is my first successful non-wiring squirrely tree. So I grew this with directional pruning and strategic placement in the window. Also using branches of one of my philodendron uh, indoor tropical plants because they're really a nice strong branch to get this thing to creep back around towards the sun. So once I defoliate this you'll really be able to see it but um, it's, it's really turning out cool. I think next this guy needs a, a pot to match it's large canopy. I might even do like a an elliptical one, a lower, shorter one, maybe a mica pot. That would be cool. Oh yeah, they're all over this guy. Branches are so sticky. 